Good morning, friends. It's a blessing to be here with all of you in worship today. I hope you don't mind I snuck in to take a little picture of the family bell choir because it made me really happy. I didn't get super close to anybody. As I stood there, I was like, oh, I should be wearing a mask right now. But I was, I was plenty of space. I was plenty of space away, so I was taking all of the precautions. It's beautiful when a family can come together with something that's such a gift like music. We're so glad to have you here this morning and all the time. For this morning's mental health moment, I wanted to talk mostly to parents, grandparents, caregivers, people with children in their lives. The um, governor came through with school information and school districts are coming through with uh, this is what that there is no right answer. That what I would advise as we walk into this unknown space together is that we extend grace. Grace to our sisters and brothers who make different choices than we do. Whether they decide to go all online or decide to send their kids to school, everyone is struggling with what, what is a life and death choice. Trying to figure out what the best fit is for their family. So I wanted to take a minute to normalize that struggle. To know that every family is having that struggle. Every family who did not already homeschool before COVID is dealing with that. And so I feel like the best way we can be a family of faith is to extend grace and love no matter what that choice is. Because there, there are parents who are working, there are parents who are not working, there are caregivers who are struggling to figure out how to make this work, how to make sure their kids get what they need developmentally and academically and just knowing that everyone's going to be a year behind next year. It's just kind of how it's going to be. And so breathe in God's grace for yourself. Breathe in God's grace for families around you. Social media makes that so hard. But just pause for a moment and be grounded in the fact that you know you are making the best decision you can with the information you have, no matter what that decision may be. And if you ever need some spiritual guidance or support, we're always here. You can call the church office. You can email one of us. You are not alone in this misadventure. That you have family and friends that you can turn to no matter what. That's what community is. Amen? For our children's moment this morning, I wanted to talk a little bit about the virtual vacation Bible school that we've been going through. Um, next week, we will be showing you a video to give you a little bit of taste. Next week's going to be, we're going to be entering into our last week, so I'll make sure that we get a chance to see some of the songs, some of the activities. But every week, we talk about having compassion. Compassion for each other, compassion for the world. This week it was compassion for ourselves. So it fits kind of well into my, into my mental health moment. Like having compassion for yourself even when you have to make a hard decision. Well, one of the things that we got to do was take time creating something that brings you joy. Um, Sarah, who is the Faith Formation Coordinator, is the best crocheter I have ever seen making things from owls to unicorns to shawls to things that I can't even comprehend. Sewing does not bring me joy. I can sew straight lines, but I know lots of people who make beautiful quilts. One of the things that she said on Facebook made me think of how we are created to be creative. And so I want to encourage you this week as the kids just learn to have compassion for themselves by doing things they enjoy, to take some time and do something that brings you joy. If you'd be willing to share it in the comments of what you do that brings you joy. I know that when my mom is not recovering from a knee replacement, she loves to make cards. She's doing very well, by the way. Um, those cards will be coming out in maybe a couple more weeks. And I know that I love, um, I do like to crochet. I am by no means Sarah. 
but I love to paint, and I go to painting class every week, and I love to create things. My husband just built <laughs> a life-size, well, maybe not life-size, it feels life-size to me, a giant dragon in our front uh, gardens. We realized we could not keep plants alive, so he took recycled tires, and he made a dragon. And so maybe someday I'll show you all a picture of this dragon. But it's just about taking time to create things that bring you joy and how that'll serve to bolster your spirits, but it also serve to be who God created you to be. God created us to be creative. And so one of the best ways to have compassion for yourself is to give yourself permission to create. So I look forward to hearing what you do and what you can create over the next week. Thank you.